So I finished season one of The Tick, and I liked it a lot. What Ash vs. the Evil Dead does as kind of a spoof on the whole supernatural monster hunter thing, this does for superheroes. So it's kind of like kick-ass, but way more over the top. You take all these superhero tropes, and then you mix them with modern conveniences. The super villain, at one point, he's having the torture sequence, and he goes, Alexa, play ominous music. So it's that kind of meta humor that I think it does really well. The villains, they drink almond milk and vitamin water, they squabble with hipster ex-boyfriends, they take Ubers or they drive very non-super villain type cars. Now the humor, it's very meta. It's, it's constantly drawing attention to the fact that we are watching a TV show, it's not real life, it's fiction, it's breaking the fourth wall a lot. So what this means is, um, the tick, he'll say to our protagonist, Arthur, you're doing so well, you're already at stage three, the hero ex rejects the hero's call. So it's always, you know, poking fun of the fact that it is a story when Arthur's brought into the police station and they're looking up to see if he's a superhero, they pull him up on the computer and it says, um, superhero confirmation pending. And it's funny because at the point in our story, he's still, it's not sure whether he's going to become a superhero or not. So it's when jokes like that work on multiple levels within the actual story itself. And then also for us as the audience, what we're actually watching. And then there's also a lot of literalism humor where things are just figures of speech and we don't actually see, we'll actually see them on the show. Like there's a character who's actually wearing a tinfoil hat or the stuff that's usually shown, but not actually described in words. We'll hear it described in words. The super villain says, we'll hit them where it hurts, the civilians. And the tick He'll always go on these flowery monologues, but what's funny is he'll get idioms slightly wrong and or put his own silly twist on it, like things we've heard a million times, they're not cliches. Oh, the devil takes many forms, evil wears many masks. He'll say things like, evil wears many different mittens, just as kind of ridiculous things, or these kind of, he'll take an idiom and then he'll get it wrong so it doesn't make any sense, but the tone of voice won't change. He'll say in the, the same self-serious tone, ah, we'll just cross that bridge when we burn it. So it's that kind of absurdist, almost anti-humor, there's times where the villain goes to this guy's ear. He's like, what's that in your ear? It's nothing. And it's just like kind of, again, anti-joke humor that I think is really effective. Or the tick, when he's going on his monologues, he'll take two different idioms and just smash them together in ways that don't quite work. Ah, it's just the way Destiny crumbles her cookie. Now, Peter Serafinowicz, he is perfect. Just his face is so good when he's listening intently to someone and he's this kind of comical, valiant hero. Just the look on his face is just perfect. Now, Peter Warburton, apparently he did it on a show a little while back. I could really see him pulling this off as well, but I think they just got the perfect actor and he alone makes this worth watching. And the action on this, particularly the Tick's action scenes are great. Now, they obviously don't have a big budget, but what they're able to do with the visuals and the costume and the actions on the small budget, I think is great. They really use the money that they do have really effectively. The tick, it reminds you a lot of Luke Cage, just unstoppable, bullets bouncing off him, just effortlessly sending people flying, and it's quite entertaining to watch. And then the world building that we do get of a world that actually does have superheroes in their existence is acknowledged by the media, and we get funny laws like the 28th Amendment that you can't unmask superheroes, so some good world building. Like I said, great dialogue, really, really good writing. Great characters that you really like. The only weak point I'll say is the storylines itself and the arcs that we have. There, You don't really care that much about anything that's happening. There's never really any stakes. Um, so the actual storyline throughout the season, and it was a pretty long season, was pretty weak, I would say. But other than that, everything else, the talent that they have assembled of the cast and the writing, they've got a great, a great premise and great talent to, to get good execution. So... If they could just come up with a really good storyline and some really good through lines that could really get the audience invested, I think it could be a great show. And just the central dynamic at the core of Arthur as the insecure, neurotic, overthinking, overanalyzing, and then pair him with just this goofy, over-the-top, heroic figure. It's just a great pairing at the center. And I loved what they had at the very beginning where it was this whole unre unreliable narrator thing. They actually dropped, dropped that term later in the season where you didn't know if all this was real or if it was all in, in Arthur's head. I thought it was great because, for instance, when we see the supervillain, we, because we, we think we're watching a superhero show, we see a supervillain, but then Arthur's sister, she comes in and obviously she just sees a nutcase in a cape ranting in the park. So it was very funny, but they dropped that pretty early in the season. We found out that no, all this is really happening. It's not just in Arthur's head. What I love to go with this whole over the top meta humor, they pick Jackie Earl Haley to play the super villain. Now he's just a stereotypical villain character actor. He was a pedophile in Little Children. He was Freddy Krueger. He played a, an enforcer in All the King's Men. So he's just this 
stereotypical Hollywood villain, the fact that they landed him to play their supervillain, I think was a great touch. And one of my favorite moments of the season, his character, who's called the Terror, he pays his, or orders his henchmen to yell at him and, and critique him while he's playing the drums, just furiously playing the drums. It's like he watched Whiplash and got this masochistic fantasy about J.K. Simmons just hurling obscenities at him. It's just that perfect kind of random humor that I think works so well in this. And then there's Midnight, who's this dog, former superhero, now he's jaded, he's newly an atheist, he's quoting Nietzsche, he's on the, the public lecture circuit, saying things like, I'm so glad that so many well-meaning people like yourself can can find meaning in my in my secular journey. It's a great show. Now, I, I will say, last thing I'll say, if you don't like it from the first episode, you know you're not going to like the show. It's one of those shows that it doesn't really change a lot. So if you watch it and it's not for you, you don't like the humor, you can stop watching it and know that you're not missing out on anything. It's not like it changes a lot or gets a lot better or changes tone. So I'd say give it a try. It's definitely worth giving it a try. And if you do like it, keep watching it. If you don't, don't feel a problem just turning it off.